Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel. In this tutorial we're going to be having a look at how we can build a bot for our Discord server. This is going to be a simple bot that uh, will be used to greet users when they write a message. Uh, we're going to be using Spring Boot and another Discord for Java library that's going to give us this nice API so we can do all of the things that are necessary for this bot. Um, but before we get into our coding, we need to create the bot itself. So here I am on this page, you can see on my screen, um, I need to create the new application to which we are going to be the ad adding the bot. Uh, you need to be logged in into your uh, Discord account to be able to access this. And once you are, then you should be able to see something like this. Okay, so to get started, first we want to go here to this uh, new application button and give a name to our bot. So this could be something uh, like, in our case, greeting spot. Then uh, I'm going to uh, click here to uh, allow the, the, so to note that I read terms of service. So just check that and then click create. Once we have uh, clicked create, we are going to be uh, on this page where we will uh, have some keys which you probably do not want to share uh, with the public so um, we can um, yeah for, for in my case I don't really care because this uh, I won't be adding it to any of my servers so I have created a test server which I will be used uh, will be using for this but uh, if you are using it for your servers and you should probably not share this with anybody Okay, then uh, let's go to the bot session, uh, bot section here in the settings, uh, and we can add a bot here. So uh, it asks you if you want to add a bot, so click yes, um, the bot has appeared, and then here we will have this token. So um, the token will be later used in our application. So this is also something that you should not be showing uh, to anybody. So please make sure that you keep this secret for yourself. So we're going to be adding this as an application property to our uh, to our application so you actually if you don't want to um, you don't want to check that in so into your repository or something like that so you can do that so it, then you add it to your application as an environment property okay so um, for now we have created our bot uh, later on we are going to be having a look at this page where we're going to be handling some permissions where we need the client ID which we can uh, see um, uh, let me find it yeah which we can see here. So we can uh, have the client ID, we will copy it from here. But uh, for now, let's uh, leave it as it is. So we have created our bot, uh, we have created our application, that's it. So let's go um, switch back to IntelliJ now and see what we have from our code perspective. Okay, now I have opened up IntelliJ. As you can see, I have the, the project loaded in. So this is a quite simple project. So it's a, uh, I went to the Spring Initializer page as we always do. I have created a project without any dependencies. So this is a Spring uh, application, so a Spring Boot application, and it has currently no dependencies. So this is what we want to change now. So we want to go here and add a new dependency. So I'll be just pasting it in. So this is the library, so Discord for J, so Discord for Java. Uh, this is the latest version that I have available now, and I'm going to uh, import so download all of these uh, dependencies that we need and then this will give us a nice API uh, that we can use to connect to our Discord server so to our bot. Okay so our um, dependencies have been downloaded and we are ready to go. The first thing that we want to do is we want to create a new package in which we are going to be placing some interface that we're going to be using for our event listening. So um, the way that our bot is going to be working is uh, somebody will post a message into the server and then the bot will recognize that and respond in some way saying hello, whatever. And uh, in order for the bot to know that we need to listen to some events. So like uh, event would be when the message is created. So create message event and when the message itself is updated. So update uh, message event. But first, let's create our interface that we're going to be using to listen to this event. Let me create it first and then I'll guide you through it what we have. And here it is. I have created a new package here called listeners, where we are going to be putting all of those listeners that we're going to create. And uh, here we have this simple interface that this extends this event coming from the library itself. And uh, it has two methods where we get the event type and then some um, execute method to which we can pass in the event. And we also, in addition to that, we have the handle error, so where we can handle some errors. Currently, I'm just printing the stack trace. You can, uh, of course, add some fancy logging and things like that, so you can uh, do this in a really same way as you would do for any other app. 
But for now, for, for our use case, uh, we don't have to do anything, so I'll just print stack, stack trace here. Okay, uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to do the configuration. So I, I mentioned the token earlier, so this is something that we're going to be using to connect to the server, and we're going to be doing that in this configuration class. So I'll create it, and then uh, we'll go through it, and I'll explain you what we have there. And here it is. This is a simple configuration class, uh, which also creates one bean. Uh, first, as always, uh, with Spring, you annotate your configuration class with that configuration annotation, so the Spring knows this is a configuration class and will initialize the things that you have here for you. Uh, the next thing that we have here is the token I mentioned, so uh, we reading the value from the uh, application property, so this is in the resource package, there should be application properties, so we can uh, copy this part here um, and paste it in the application properties, and your token uh, would go here. Um, you need to enter the value of the tokens that you can get from uh, this page. So I told you, so click this button, you'll get a token, and then uh, you can paste it in here and it will be available uh, for the configuration class. Then uh, the next, we have this gateway Discord client uh, bean uh, where we are actually connecting uh, to the Discord uh, co using the token that we have. Um, then uh, this is um, basically you need to build the, the, the um, using the Discord client builder, you need to build the, the Discord client itself, then you need to log in and so on. And then uh, for every listener, so this is the class that we created previously, so this interface, um, so this interface will be implemented by some listeners and we're going to iterate through these listeners and uh, then say on uh, the type, we're going to uh, do some things like we're going to call the listener execute method and we're also going to call the handle error method on the error. And then we, we just use the client to subscribe to these uh, listeners that we have. And then of course, at the end, once we have done with that, we return the client that has been created. Okay, hopefully so far everything is clear. Uh, if something is unclear, just leave a comment uh, below the video and I'll try to get to it. Okay, uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to create our message listener class, which is going to be used to implement our logic, what we want to do when the message comes in. So we're going to uh, use that to um, yeah, um, handle the messages in the way we want. So uh, let me create it and then again we'll go through it and I'll explain what we have there. And here it is. It's a simple class um, that um, is an abstract class that we're going to be implementing in, uh, in some other. So we're going to extend some other classes with this. So the, the create message listener and update message listener that I mentioned. Update message listener doesn't really make sense in our uh, context here because we're just greeting users when they write the first message. Um, but you can use that to, to uh, do something else in your use cases. But let's just take a look at what we are actually doing here. You might notice that we have one field here called author, which is by default is unknown. So we use that uh, down below. But uh, here in this process message, uh, we pass in the the message that comes from the event. Basically what we say here, we're just filtering the message and checking if the message itself is coming from an actual user or a bot. So you can get the author from the message and then you can map um, all of those users that uh, are not a bot, uh, otherwise you return false. And basically if the user is not a bot, you get the author from it. And uh, yeah, if the author is actually set and then you uh, uh, add it to this, uh, property that we have here within this class. So we're just caching it within the application, we're just caching the username. And then later on, we are getting the channel in which this message was posted. And then on this channel, we are creating a new message saying uh, hello and whatever the author username was. And then we're just returning. So it's um, nothing, nothing special happening here. We're just printing out this uh, message in the channel in which the author of the original message has written something. Um, it will be a bit easier to see it when you actually when we actually connect to the server, then I can show you what's happening. Okay, uh, now let's create our message create listener. So let's go to that. I'll implement it again and show you what I have and then uh, we'll go through it. And here it is. So this is a service now. So I have created a new service package. Um, this is always annotated as so with the service annotation, so from Spring. And uh, you can see that we're now extending the message uh, listener that we implemented just uh, just now. 
and it will also implementing uh, the event listener that we implemented early on and then we have the message create event so this is the type of the event that we have here and uh, we are overriding the two methods that we have in this interface so the get event type so we have it here and then we also have the, our execute method and the execute method calls the process mes message method with the message itself so uh, this is what we implemented here and uh, if you wanted to tell the difference between the create message and update message, that's something that you could do here. So you could extend this by passing the, the type of the event and things like that. So basically you can do here whatever you want, whatever your use case is. Uh, but I want to show you now how you can do it for a different event. So uh, let's create a service for the update uh, message. So let me do that and then again, we'll go through it. And here it is. So now we have another service called message update service, which extends and implements basically the same things as our create service, except now we have the update event uh, in question, except, and the other one was the create event. Uh, the execute method here is a bit different. We are just checking if the content change. Uh, if it did not, then we don't do anything. Basically, we then again getting the message and then again calling the process message uh, method. Here, again, you could pass in the type and all do all of the things that you need so uh, to tell the difference between the create and update. And yeah, it really depends on you. Um, okay, so basically all in all, this would be a finished thing. So um, starting it now, adding it to the server that we have uh, would work. So I will show you now how you can do that. Uh, but before we do that, we need to add one more uh, service or one more component because um, the way this Spring Boot application works, so since we don't, we won't have any running server or anything like that, so once once you start it, once all of the threads are done, so like you start your application, it connects to the Discord server and there is nothing else to do, it just shuts off. So the application just finishes and that's it. So the, our program is done, um, but which is not really nice for us because we want to keep it running. We want to, to be able to listen to the messages all the time. So the way we do that is we just kind of fake it. Uh, we add uh, a scheduler, which just prints something every minute and that's it. Then Spring will know, okay, I still have one more thread left. I'll have to keep the application alive and it stays and prints this message that we have. It's not really a nice solution, but it works. Uh, in, a, in a real case where you would deploy this somewhere, you could actually uh, create a web server where you could then have some endpoints which you can use to, to query some data from your application so to be able to actually access it. But in our, in our context, we don't actually need that. Um, so let me create this uh, keep alive service and I'll just explain you what I have there. And here it is. So our keep alive service uh, just starts a scheduler which prints out the current time in milliseconds every minute. Nothing special. Um, okay, then that's it. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to invite our bot to our server. So if I go uh, here, we have our bot, we have our tokens. We need to go uh, to the general information, uh, actually no, to OAuth2 uh, and copy the client ID from here. So we have copied the client ID. Then we go to the permission calculator. So it's a different page here. Um, it's a third party page where you can paste in your client ID here. And then you have your link, which will then you can use to, to invite the, uh, the bot to your Discord server. Then you need to give this bot some permissions. Uh, for our test case, we would just go with the administrator, administrator so the bot can do any, anything that we want. Uh, but you can also take a look at the other permissions that you want to give your bot. So administrator is not really advised to be given. So I click this link here and uh, then it will allow me to invite this bot to my server. I have uh, selected here my Lilium code server, test server that I created, and I have um, everything else here. So I can click continue, and then uh, this bot will be added as uh, administrator. I have to check that I'm human, which I am, of course, and you can see that the greetings bot has hopped into the server. So uh, I can uh, go to Discord, and you can see that here the greetings bot has hopped into the server, and uh, Technically, nothing will happen here. I would need to start, so you can see that it's not that it's offline. So I would need to go back to IntelliJ. I would uh, go to my um, application class, so this one here. I would start the application, so this takes some time. So let's uh, wait for that. I have to. So before we start the application, I have forgotten one thing. So uh, we need to go to the 
application class and we don't need to enable scheduling here. So this is one thing that we want to do. Um, otherwise our uh, application will finish as soon as it starts up. So we have uh, used the enable scheduling annotation here and now we can start our application. Okay, uh, now application has started. As you can see, it printed the timestamp here um, and it's currently running. So if you go to this code, this bot should be um, online now. And if I write a message, it should recognize this and respond with the create message in this channel that I'm using. So if I say, um, I am here, I hit enter, and then it says, so the greetings bot says, hello, because I wrote the message. And this is something uh, that we implemented. So we have created successfully a bot that uh, executes this process message on uh, whenever we are writing something. So hopefully uh, this this helped you out. This helped you out to understand how you can create some bot. Of course, you can do now more complicated things here, like some commands, which you would then recognize from the message to see if the command starts with some special keyword like uh, exclamation mark um, log and then you log some message or something like that. I don't know, it depends what you want to do. Um, so you could do th those kind of things. Uh, if you're interested in, in how we can do that, how we can build that, uh, how to um, how to get this bot up and running to your server, we can also talk about that. So just leave me some comments and then we can have another video uh, where we talk about that. Um, but for this video, this would be it. So if you have any questions, I have something is unclear. Uh, just let me know uh, down below in the comments and then I'll try to get to you. And then uh, until the next video, I will see you then.